Hi friends, what's on my mind today? You know, I sit down here and decide that I'm going to, um, you know what? Every time I sit down to do a video, you do a photo bomb on me. You come down those, it's something going on in the universe. Every time I sit down here to do a view to video, you were upstairs doing a nap. I, I wait for you to go take a nap so that I'm not bothering you while I'm sitting here talking to my friends. And then <laughs> here you come down the stairs every single time. I don't know, I was just saying hi to my friends too. So you hear me talking? That's not why you get up and come down. No, I didn't hear anything. It's talking. just something going on in the universe that makes this happen. I don't know. Come over here closer if you're going to say hi. Hi, I said hi. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Um, where was I? Oh, I was going to tell you it's an unusual day in Ahihik. Mexico on the shore of Lake Chapala. It's a cloudy day and it actually rained for about 30 seconds. Let me show you a picture out the front door. It's very unusual that it's cloudy. You know, we got some blue sky up there. But uh, this time of the year, beginning of May, Uh, update on my tree. The top still looks good. The rest of it is definitely stressed. Mount Garcia. I don't know. Can you see that? It's a little hazy. Oh, look at there. We have a horse. Hmm. Interesting. You probably can't hear it, but right on the other side of the bulrushes there, there's a couple of fishermen who are in their boat. And every once in a while, they're smacking the water, or maybe the bottom of the boat, uh, in order to scare a fish into their nets. And then I think somebody's, you know, tearing down my house out here. I go out there and find out, oh no, it's just the fishermen. Anyway, I'm going back there to sit on the couch. Hey, you see that colorful thing over there? It's supposed to be a kite, but it doesn't work right. It's pretty. It's not functional. I don't know what to do with it. thought maybe I'd hang it up there on the wall somewhere. Well, anyway, let me see my bird. The body is a huge piece of obsidian, black volcanic glass. I had it made by a guy up the street, he's a welder. I picked up that piece of obsidian myself over by Mount Tequila. There's a place on the freeway over there where you, the auto pista, where you drive through a cut in the mountain and it's black obsidian on both sides. Anyway, let's just uh, sit down over here and have a conversation. You know, I often sit here and I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and it's a thing that when I say, oh, what's on my mind today, what's on my mind is what in the heck can I talk about today? And I know that um, many, many, many of my subscribers are interested and they're here and they subscribed because they want to know about retiring and living in Mexico. And so when I make videos about that, um, I get uh, very good uh, numbers of views. 
And then, um, if you've watched my channel enough, you know that my actual passion is not retiring and living in Mexico. Although it's what I have to talk about, it's not my passion. My passion is RVing. So I sit here and I thought, well, I'm certainly not going to talk about RVing. I can talk about uh, retiring and living in Mexico here on the north shore of Lake Chapala in Ajijic. And it's a fun thing to talk about, but it's not what's on my mind every day. It's just my life. And a YouTube channel can either be a blog of your personal life or it can be about some particular subject. Um, mine, I guess, is kind of a combination of that. And I don't always talk a lot about my personal things, but I kind of have a couple of them on my mind today. Uh, one of them is that my mother passed this week on Tuesday. And of course that's sad. You only get one mother. But um, it's not entirely sad. We should all aspire to live a good and happy life for 102 years. And she died um, peacefully under hospice care at um, a family home with um, loved ones around her. And although I'm more or less by government mandate quarantined and restricted to being in my house here in Mexico, um, and I won't be able to um, go to a service for mom or uh, wasn't able to go up there to say goodbye. We were able to do that virtually with iPads and earbuds and so on. So that's how the world's working today. And, um, lots and lots of people, millions of people are in that situation. And I feel for those who are losing loved ones long before they should. Um, of course, I'd like my mother to be 103, but 102 is a good run, and like I said, it's not entirely sad that she passed. She was happy, healthy, active, and totally mentally alert up until the last few days, so um, you can't ask for any more than that. The thing that has kept my mind off of that is that I have been very, very busy, and this is another personal note that I'm not entirely ready to share with you, but um, I'm working on a new business, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. I will tell you that it has something to do with my great passion, and that's RVing. And I believe that RVing is going to become even more... Um, um, uh, prevalent, active, there are going to be more people RVing in the future. You just think about it as a family vacation. Um, would you rather sleep in a hotel bed? Would you rather go on a, a cruise ship? Would you like to fly in an airplane? Certainly those things will all become uh, activities that we participate in again. But I think there will be some greater resistance to them and traveling and enjoying um, being outdoors and um, seeing new and different things as you travel is going to be, um, there's going to be more interest in, in doing that in your own bed with your own closet and your own kitchen in an RV uh, even more than It'll be even more attractive than it has been in the past um, with the things that are going on in the world today. So anyway, I'm not going to tell you about my new business, but I've been spending most of my waking hours uh, working on something, and the time will come that I let you know about what's going on if it um, flies. <laughs> Uh, and if it does, uh, I'm sure if you are an RVer um, or ever have intentions of being one, that you will definitely be interested. Anyway, not here to talk about that today. Well, what can we talk about today? 
Uh, I saw a new term in the world the other day, um, WFH, work from home. And this is another thing that uh, is on my mind about RVing is that uh, as companies find out that it's more cost effective to have people work from home, and as schools learn that um, learning online may be uh, more profitable than having a big classroom, and as um, employees find that they have more location independence if they have a good Wi-Fi signal, more and more people will figure out that having wheels on your house can be an interesting thing. <laughs> so again, RVing, WFH, uh, work from home. And if your home has wheels, um, well, it's my passion that um, I like that lifestyle. I have to tell you that there's a connection in my mind between RVing and retiring and living in Mexico. And the reason is because I came to Mexico in an RV uh, nearly 20 years ago. So uh, to me, there isn't a big distinction between retiring and living in an RV and retiring and living in Mexico, because that's how I got to Mexico. Um, I've told this story before, but I have a lot of new subscribers and maybe uh, some of you who have heard me tell this story before uh, might um, enjoy seeing how different it gets because <laughs> I don't know about your stories, but my stories get better the more I tell them. Uh, that, isn't, uh, that isn't to say that um, I exaggerate or I don't tell the truth, but hey, Practice makes perfect. So anyway, how did I get to Mexico in an RV? Lynn and I came to Guadalajara in 2001. And I had um, gotten out of a business that had sustained us um, for living expenses for many years, 26 years. And um, uh, people always ask me, well, what would you retire from? I didn't retire, they fired me. <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, I pretty soon figured out that uh, uh, how much you work didn't have a lot to do with how much money you had at the end of the month. So anyway, um, we came to Guadalajara because I wanted to come to Guadalajara. It's one of the oldest European-style cities in the Western Hemisphere, um, started in 1541 by Hernan Cortez and, and his uh, conquistadors. He didn't start the city, I don't mean to say that, and don't give me a history lesson about it, but <clears throat> uh, the church was started in 1541 in Guadalajara. Um, that was, uh, what, 50 years after Columbus discovered America. And don't tell me about Leif Eric the Red or whoever either. I'm not trying to give you a history lesson. I'm just talking. <laughs> anyway, it's an old, old city. And uh, it's an interesting city. And the historical district is wonderful. And we really enjoyed it. But I wanted to come there because, I don't know, maybe when I was a kid I heard a song Guadalajara. Uh, I know that I heard one uh, named Granada, and I've been to Granada, Spain, and so I thought, well, hey, let's go to Guadalajara. Anyway, we came down to Guadalajara uh, for three weeks, and we walked around in the historical district and um, really fell in love with the city. And then we drove down to this place called Lake Chapala, rented a car, and uh, came down here, and... Um, couldn't find a place to stay. The Hotel Nueva Posada was full and we went to another place and they had no uh, vacancies. And we wound up at the top of the hill in Casa de Abuela 
and uh, in the dark, hadn't really seen the lake yet, uh, got up in the morning, walked out on the balcony and took a look at the lake and said, wow, <laughs> this is really beautiful. And so make uh, that part of the story short, um, we were going to go all over Mexico in those three weeks and see other things and we said, let's just stay here another day. And after a couple of days, we said, um, we don't need to go to Morelia and see the butterflies. We don't need to go to Tequila and see the tequila factories. We don't need to go to Puerto Vallarta and see the beaches. Uh, we don't need to go to San Miguel Allende and see all of the expats. Let's just stay here for a few more days. And after three weeks, we're saying, you know, we're, we're going to come back to this area. We'll do those other things some other time. And on the plane ride home, I said, you know, hey, we met a lot of really interesting people there. I could see myself uh, spending some more time down there. So very shortly, uh, we decided that we would come back the next year for three weeks. I mean, excuse me, for three months. And uh, we were going to do that uh, January, February, March in Mexico. And um, long about uh, November, I saw this old motorhome. It was, well, it was 12 years, 13 years old at the time, 14 years old. It was a 1988 uh, 33-foot Southwind. And um, uh, I told Lynn, I said, I, I want to buy that and drive it to Mexico and for a month. She's saying, no, that's crazy. That's just crazy. <laughs> and finally, after about a month, she said something like, well, I think you're having the midlife crisis. I was uh, 55. <laughs> I think you're having a midlife crisis, and if it doesn't have anything to do with a blonde and a Corvette, go get the damn thing. So I did, and uh, fixed it up a little bit and said, hey, I'm going to drive this to Mexico. Uh, it, it, it wasn't enough money that it was going to be a financial burden if it broke down or I had to park it alongside the road somewhere in Mexico and abandon it. So that's what we did. We took off for Mexico in, um, right after Christmas in 2002 in that old motorhome. And uh, boy, it was that an adventure. People say, well, how long did it take you to drive down there to Guadalajara, Mexico? It's about 3,000 miles from Portland, Oregon. I said, well... Took about a month and a half. <laughs> the reason it took a month and a half was because that's all I wanted to drive. 100 miles a day was my thing. But um, one of the reasons that it became my thing is because I had a, an ATM card to get cash from a federal credit union. And at the time, the limit was $300. And... Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were one day, so I couldn't get money. Uh, I could get $300 for those three days of the week, and then $300 a day. Anyway, in Mexico at the time, for the price of gas and the tolls on the autopistas and staying in an RV park and just our expenses for food and stuff, it was costing me more money than I could get, so we couldn't travel more than a hundred miles a day and we had no problem with staying in one place for two or three days at a time on our way. Anyway, took over a month to drive 3,000 miles. Well, um, we came down here in that old motorhome and we didn't want to stay in the motorhome at here. We did for a few weeks um, in a place that's no longer there called Pals Trailer Park. It's now in uh, San Antonio, Tlacopan, the um, 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 having a senior moment, El Parque. Used to be a trailer park. Anyway, RV park. Uh, we would look for a house to rent, and we did. We rented in the course of um, four years before we bought this property, we stayed in four different places and um, learned that 
we had opinions about different parts of town. And I'll talk about those opinions some of the time uh, in more detail, but briefly, if you live in the village, that's like in the heart of Ahihik, it's noisy. Um, you get more uh, noise up the hill than down the hill because noise goes up. Um, there is some rumor that uh, the mosquitoes and the scorpions are different up or down by the lake, and I'm not going to express which is which because I don't agree with uh, the popular opinion. Um, there are uh, different parts of town that are uh, walled and you don't have a view or you're up on the hill and you have a fantastic, wonderful view. Um, anyway, there are many different considerations for what your personal preferences are for where you might locate yourself along the north shore of Lake Chapala, and the variables are many. Anyway, um, I guess that's my story for today. That's what's on my mind. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.